Hello Nigerians, this is the Vox Pop on the Way show. And for the forthcoming election, we'll be doing a sensitization, teaching Nigerians how to vote correctly. Because it is no news that many Nigerians don't know how to vote correctly. And so that our votes are not void, we need to be able to teach the people how to vote correctly. So come with us as we teach the Nigerian people how to vote correctly for the forthcoming election. Hello sir, do you know how to vote correctly? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Do you want to show me? Yeah. Alright, go ahead. This is exactly how you vote. You put your thumb on the stamp pad and then you vote right here. And then make sure that your hand, your, your thumb has taken a lot of ink so that it can show correctly on whoever, whatever candidate you are supporting. Thank you. Like we know, and like I said earlier, it is no news that many Nigerians do not know how to vote correctly. Some people turn print across the line. Some don't even get so much enough ink to turn print correctly. And that is why we came on the street to teach people how to vote correctly. Thank you very much for staying with us. This is the Vox Pop on the Way Show. And of course, it's your girl, Dami. Thank you. Till next time. Bye bye. Thanks for staying with us. The major landmark in the history of election, electioneering in Nigeria was the introduction of party politics by the McPherson's Constitution of 1951, which led to the evolution of the political parties that contested elections into the regional assemblies. The parties were the Action Group, AG led by Chief Obafemi Awolowo, and was in control of the Western region, the Northern People's Congress, NPC led by Sir Amadou Bello, and was in control of the Northern region, while the National Convention of Nigerians and Cameroons, later National Convention of Nigerian Cities, NCNC, which controlled the Eastern region. Over the years, there have been clear challenges confronting the electoral process and the electorate of Nigeria. And with the general elections just hours away, it is important that we sensitize Nigerians on how to vote correctly when they go out to cast their votes tomorrow. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You could also tweet to us at WayshowAfrica1 with the hashtag ways show hmm. you see this thing about voting correct correctly mm -hmm. it's actually a very big deal yes sir. because mm -hmm. see that video that we've been watching every day this week imagine do you know there are people that actually don't know how to place okay let me shock you when we went to the street well as a matter of fact the video is from the streets anyway mm. one guy literally thumb printed on the party's logo i'm like oh my god <laughs> How? <laughs> How is that even possible? He completed and he didn't see that's wrong. Of course, he doesn't know. Do you care? He just yeah. felt like, okay, well, since it's the party and mm. it's the logo, so I can just thumb print anywhere. Meanwhile, there's a space that is for thumb printing, yeah. actually. So, mm. so many people don't. Some people just think when you just put your, hand, your index finger, uh, finger on the ink and then just put it on the party that you want to vote, that's it. They don't even take caution to even mm. check that, okay, it is properly placed. Truthfully, many people don't know how to vote correctly. Yeah, I mean, I've had so many, I've, I've had people ask me questions like, okay, so can we use any of our fingers? Does it have to be the index finger? Can it be the middle finger? Can it be any other? Can it be the thumb? And the truth is, I mean, most um, if you if you look at most voter sensitization and enlightenment, it's advised to always use your index yes. finger, and that's because it's just a whole lot easier, easier. to control mm -hmm. your index finger. So truly, because I mean, when you did your biometrics for the PVC, you registered all of the your fingers, mm -hmm. right? So anyone will work, yeah. but you, your index finger is a lot easier to control. That's why it's. I thought we were going to thumb prints. Me, I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually I mean, use, your, yeah. use your index finger. I saw a joke earlier, and then they said all the ladies that usually have claws as nails. <laughs> Me, I was, going, I was going to use myself as an example right now because imagine I have to complain and then. My nails already stopping me. I mean, so I think that for tomorrow, some of us will have to remove the nails on our index. Why are you hearing that? <laughs> so, 
I was just going to say, can you tell me now? Yes, I was going to say that this index finger, see my, see my fingers, I love it. But I, I think the whole idea, right, it's for us to ensure that whatever we're thumbprinting, right, it doesn't go outside of the borders of the, because if it goes outside of the borders, it's spilled into another party. Yeah. You know, this, this thing about proper thumbprinting, um, you won't understand how painful it is until you are actually standing where they are counting um, the votes and you don't see so many votes being voided or uh, called out to be invalid mm. or, you know, or, or unacceptable just because somebody didn't know how to put the ink where they wanted to vote or even folding the, the paper correctly because, I mean, some of the ink, you know, it's very watery, mm -hmm. right? So the trick is always put just a little, just enough for it to just show, okay, this is where the ink is, you know, and then just some print, you know. So, I mean, a, a lot of times I have, I have gone through uh, how many elections now? I've been, I've been voting for a while now. And, you know, ev every time that uh, subject of invalid vote comes up, you know, I cringe. I always feel so bad that why, you know, I mean, somebody should have just, you know, at least sensitized these people or taught them what to do properly, right? Okay. I mean, because there's no point um, standing in that queue for so long. I mean, there was a particular election that we were in the rain, hmm. you know? And yet, after all that suffering, after queuing long uh, lines of hmm. queues just to cast your vote, hmm. then they now call out maybe 100 people voted, about 30 votes are invalid. How painful is that? Very, very you know, I, I think, you know, for anyone that is going out tomorrow, please, just be careful. Whatever party you're voting, I don't care. But let that vote be worth your while, like, you know, when you're thumbprinting. So for us that have clothes, <laughs> what I would say we should do is probably maybe, you know, try to, try to, not, not like this, <laughs> try to win. <laughs> Just to get the tongue yes. to touch the your <laughs> yes to touch the paper. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uti, Uti, maybe Uti has some tips. <laughs> Uti, please share No, Uti does not those. have any tips. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, then well said. It's actually very important. Yeah. Imagine that you left your house at six AM. Mm. You got there, it took about two, three hours to get accredited, you know. Then you excited, excitement and all of that. You pick your ballot paper and then you want to then put your fingerprint and then you now make that mistake. So to what end at the end of the day? Please. No. Let's, let's, let's be, we're it's actually going to show show. you live in the studio. <laughs> Chinelo, yes. You know, Chinelo, that's 6 a.m. I have left my house now because mm. I am currently... Lodging where I'm supposed to be voting because mm. I chose not to change my or transfer yeah, my yes. polling yes location right mm. so uh, because for me it's also time to spend with family so I mean at my sister's house and you know um, I'm going to be voting tomorrow mm. so sometimes it's not even leaving six a.m. so people have actually traveled mm. I mean I was on the road today heading to the mainland it was like ridiculously without any traffic. You know, a lot of stores have shut down. A lot of businesses closed early. A lot of businesses not even open today. Because a lot of people have taken out time to say, okay, they are traveling to go vote. Some have gone out of state. You know, some have gone out of probably location or something. Mm. So you just imagine how, um, after you put in all that effort, what then happens? You then go to the polling unit and you're not able to, you know, um, get that vote delivered. I, I don't think it's um, it, it, it's wisdom. It's so if you have sad. taken the sacrifice, because I mean, I was I, I overheard, but I, I think I lost a bit. Um, I, I was watching the news this morning, and it's quite impressive what the numbers, the data, Madam Data Uti will tell me, the data have said about this particular election. election. The number of people, you know, that have gone out to go get registered, to get their PVCs. So we have a huge number of first-time voters, yes, right? Yes. So it's not enough to shout, ah, I'm going to the polls, I'm going to whatever, I'm going to go and um, turn print, I'm going to vote my candidate. It's not enough. You must know how to do it well because if you end up putting all the sacrifices just to get that thing done and at the end of the day, 
you then come out to the when it's time to count those votes and the votes are considered That's invalid. Right. What then happens to all the effort that you have made? Yeah. So in because there are loads of first-time voters in, in this particular election, you know, it's very important that people pay attention. If you are watching at home and you have first-time voters around you, now will be the time to start, you know, explaining how it is done. Because yeah. again, Absolutely. you will not be allowed to have those conversations whilst at the polling unit because it will be considered you know um um what's it called a breach of the the rules of uh, voting yeah, right process, i mean you yeah. guys had dwelt you you dwelt on that yesterday. well enough yesterday mm. you dwelt on the all the do's and the don'ts when it comes to um what's it called um whilst you're at the polling unit mm. yeah Yes, thank you so much. Um, well, well said. You know, I was going to ask you a question, but attempt is silly anyway. If anybody makes a mistake on their ballot, are they going to give them another ballot paper? Uh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking no, because I am sure that some people haven't you seen exam halls where you where, have you forgot when we used to use um, HP pencil to shade? To shade. <laughs> so that will go and over shade. Uh, what what happens is that just like in exam, oh, just, just like every post, every polling material, every voting material has been absent. Yes, exactly. unfortunately, you do not have an opportunity to vote twice. Mm. You only have one chance, one paper. Do you understand? I've not seen it, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. I've not seen anywhere in the history of my voting where somebody says, oh, sorry, excuse me, ma, I made a mistake. Can you give me another paper to vote? No. It's not done. You know, you get one chance to go in, to put your vote in, and so that's why you must get it right. Mm -hmm. I, I deliberately ask that question, because I know there are some people that are wondering, ah, maybe if I make a mistake, I can always oh, no, go back. That's why it's I the end. Use, I was going to use the example of examination. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know that if you fail, you have already failed. Mm -hmm. There's no makeup. Mm -hmm. So you need to make conscious effort not yes. to fail. And that's why we want to shade. We have to shade carefully, like, ah, I'm going to shade within the box yeah, so, so yes. that I will not go and shade another answer that is wrong. Do you understand? So this particular election is like, Nigeria is really hanging. <laughs> hanging and really depending on the, on the result of this election. So uh, the, the best that we can do for this country right now is to actually vote correctly and intentionally. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so we had promised that we're actually going to show you guys live in the studio how to properly place your fingerprints while you want to um, vote, right? Remember, you're going to have the you're going to have a, a, a ink pad or stamp pad, as the case may be. But then we'll do that when we come back from this break. If you're just tuned in, we're discussing voter sensitization, how to vote correctly. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS on WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet to us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So before we went on a break, I had promised that we we're going to show you, those of us in the studio, myself and Dami, actually. <laughs> we're going to do a live demo of how to actually thumb it and how to fold your ballot paper. That is also very important. And the reason we're saying this is if you fold your ballot paper incorrectly, the ink can stain and stain another party's um, thumbprint area. And at that point, your vote is going to be rendered yeah. invalid. So, am I ready? Yes, I am. Let's do this. Okay. I'm not mm -hmm. going to show you what part it is that I'm voting for. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now here's the problem because my nails can actually... You see? <laughs> that's part of what we're saying. Better take out those clothes. Oh my God. My nails literally cannot go inside this. So I don't know. There we go. Ink. But, ah, okay, got it. All right. So, yeah. Mm, good. Make sure it doesn't... Yeah. Of course. So, yep. Yep. So, you know, you have this, the, the slots already allotted for each party that mm -hmm. you're voting for. And then they usually look like this. So, once you have done this, please make sure not to fold this way. Okay, I think I'm just going to use my son as, as an as example. example yes. Because if you fold this way, now watch what's going to happen. By the time you bring it up, look at that. Your vote is already considered invalid because you already have... So, no, so nobody will start calling you to say which one is the mm -hmm. correct one or which one did you vote for. So please, make sure that you do not fold this way. That means going to show us the correct way to fold our ballot papers. All right. So this is actually the correct. You fold your, val your ballot papers. Uh, this is vertically now. Yes. So fold it vertically. 
so that even when the ink stains anywhere, it's going to stain the party logo. Do you get it? It's going to stain the party logo as against another party's um, ballot point, or rather, thumb printing point. So you fold it vertically, not horizontally, vertically this way, so that it can stain the party's logo and not another party's um, points. So yeah, that's basically. So basically, it. you're closing, you're um, folding like you're closing a book. Yes. That's the trick. So if, even if you don't remember any other thing, just remember that once you place your, your fingerprint, you fold it like you're folding a book. You're mm. not folding over, right? You're folding it to the side. Maybe I think that's better. Yeah. It's easier to remember. So fold to the side. Don't fold it over. Um, I hope that um, we actually understand that. Uwan Uti, are you practicing? <laughs> well, what do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to ask, that um, Chinelo and uh, Dami, can you help me out? Okay. For those people that don't know where their polling units are, 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 is there anywhere we can check? Yes. Um, because now I just got to the area where I'm supposed to be voting. I'm trying to, you know, just, you know, scan through mm -hmm. where would I be going to tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You know, the, is, is there any information about, you know, um, even your polling units, knowing your polling units? Yes. You know, um, that. Yeah, sure. There, so there actually are two ways. Right, there are two ways. Uti, go ahead. Okay, Uti, go on. Yeah, so you can go on to the um, INEC. In fact, I did that just before, um, as we got on air. I wanted to test it again to see if the site was still up and running. Mm. Um, and I did that this evening. So, um, on the INEC website, the cvr.inecnigeria.org forward slash VVS. Um, and there you can enter your state of registration, local government your surname, your first name, and your date of birth, um, and then click check status, and it will bring out your details. So it will say voter information found, mm. and it will put, bring out your voter um, identification number, well, the first set of digits are blurred, but it also gives you your registration area, so your polling unit and your polling unit code. Interestingly enough, it also tells you that it can you can get directions to your Yes. Um, polling units, um, and I tried that as well, and they tried to bring up the map information. So yes, you can get that information online. Yeah, I'm actually awesome. I'm, I'm a living witness okay. to that because that actually have I did that today. I went to my polling units this morning actually, so I was confused because I remember that when I collected my PBC, I collected it somewhere around Onira. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I'm like, okay, so that means that my polling units would be in Onira, right? Until that means not me, she's like, you better check this thing so i just logged on as part of a, i just typed polling units right and then i saw a polling units um locator on the inec website and i just went there that's um what it says in a long that's even long story safe <laughs> guess what <laughs> the code on your funny enough the code on on just right on top of, above your photo your photograph on your pvc yeah. you ask the code that you can use because so the first one lagos is 24 so you just mm -hmm. go lagos you type in whatever local government it is. So just that code anyway. And then your polling units, uh, your, what's it called? Your registration center number as well. And voila. I did it for three people today. And they found their polling yeah, but you, should, you should understand that Uti is a systems person. <laughs> <laughs> she, will give you, she will give you in details. She's, she's not a, she's not a short she does not like the sharp, sharp way. <laughs> Be, if, if the government understands the strength that that Uti possesses on her inside, they will not even waste time. She will have to oh, be next, we her. need her. <laughs> well done, well done, Uwa. Thank you. <laughs> I agree with you, Uwa, one hundred. So I, I was trying, I was stranded somewhere, and I told Uti before I sent Jack. Uti has sent me location, sent me this, sent me that. I said so. I mean, okay. when she's that one person that when you feel like there's something you need to do, just call Uti. It will be done. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. You know, <laughs> but thank you for that information because I think many people are not aware of this. Yeah. But I'm just curious, though, about um, how this would impact um, people that do not have access to um, data yeah. and all of those. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uti. Yeah, what did you say? Yeah, I said, I, I was just curious about how people, you know, that are not, um, they don't have access. Uh, I guess like um, Chinelo, you have to find somebody that can help you check. Um, mm. It's quite easy to do so. So anybody that can actually get online um, can help you check. I think that if you're also in that lo locality, 
to also be able to ask because there's one, um, what's it called? Within your, every polling booth is supposed to be within your walking distance. So mm. the idea is that people that live around you should also have the same polling unit. Mm. So you can mm. also co confirm from like your um, neighbors or people in that location where you are, because of course it's graded around certain um, addresses. So if you're in a particular location, then people around you should also know what your polling booth is. But yes. because, I mean, every polling booth should be literally within a walking distance of where you are. That's how the system is set up. Mm. But really to be safe, always better. So for somebody like me, I am almost smack in the middle of two polling units so there's one by my estate gates and one behind my estate so don't assume i always assumed i would be in one and then i, I when i eventually registered i ended up being um at a, at a different one so better to be safe and not assume um and check before you go yeah. i would also like to know just to actually to get to our polling units Early okay, enough. I think we had the same thoughts because <laughs> that's what we're going to say as well. Say that. Yes. <laughs> Please get your polling units early enough. And this is why, you know, you need to check your I saw I saw the list of names today, and honestly, that's one thing that's gonna waste people's time tomorrow. Mm. Trying to find your name mm -hmm. on that list is going to take a while. So it's better that you get there early enough so that you can do that in time and then vote in time. So that even if you want to stay back, you know, you are, you are done with that whole process and then you can just relax and wait for them to count um, the votes. If not, you finish and then you we go just home that the INEC officials will actually get there on time. No, if they don't get on time, there's a number to report them. Ah, well. we, we, we spoke about that, I think, two days ago. There's mm -hmm. a number to report. Any electoral official that is not there on time, there's actually a number to call to, or to send, send an SMS to, to report them. Speaking about SMS, please don't forget to join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 You could also tweet to us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So as I was saying, you can actually send, um, report any electoral <laughs> official. Yes. So I have, uh, I need people to help me out here because I, I, I've been watching you guys sensitizing people, talking about all the rules and the regulations, the do's and the don'ts. The question I'd like to ask, really, yeah. who implements this thing? You know, because it is it is a nice to is the feel good thing that we have all of these rules and regulations that is really now to fifty million naira fine, that fifty thousand fine, go to jail and all of that, right? Yeah. I mean, we know these things because again they will tell you it's Nigerian factor. Mm -hmm. So you are you are just saying it's so so um uh, with, with so much, you know, confidence that oh, call the INEC number, I can call the number and report the official for coming in late. Come on. You, you are in Nigeria. You should know that, you know, some of these things, you know. They're not particularly accountable. So you see, so. the moment we stop making that, those excuses for them, that's when good things will I don't think it's about excuses. No, I just think it's about our reality. Uh, why should bad things be our reality? Well, that's why? How we have seen it. No, it shouldn't be that way. I don't agree. It why? should not but be that until, way. Until a change actually... Well, we are the ones that can affect the change at the end of the day. That's why you should report. Okay. So if you if anything like that happens... What do you say? What you're trying to say there is that you have a responsibility to report it. Even if you think that nothing is going to be done and nothing yeah. will come of it, mm -hmm. at least play your part. The idea yes. here is that everybody should be playing their part mm -hmm. um, and making sure that things are done. I, I found it very interesting today. I've, I spent some time just perusing the INEC website to try and even see how much information is out there because here we are trying to sensitize voters, right? And we'd expect that INEC has put out as much information as possible. Um, and I found it interesting that I ran into a document that said, uh, it's a 31-page document. That's to tell you how much um, thought has gone into it. It's a code of conduct and rules of engagement for security personnel on electoral duty. Yeah. I mean, the, the document is, is quite robust and it covers almost everything from how they ha they should carry their weapons, handle their weapons, rules for, ex ex um, for escorting the materials and the INEC officials. And I think for me, knowledge is power. So as much information as people can get um, so that people know what to expect at the polling units. Again, information is key to not just managing behavior, but actually keeping people safe because people then know what to look out for when things are not right or what, what seems out of place or seems off. Um, so just encouraging people to try and get as much information as possible and to stay situation aware. Keep your head on a swivel. If you know, anything can happen. I think one of the things I've seen in some of the very useful guides that I've seen, this is not the time to wear your high heels. This is not the time to wear your latest 
uh, designers and jewelry. Yeah. Keep it all at home. Stay comfortable. Stay loose. Keep it casual. Mm. If you need to pick up your feet, you need to be able to move. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was watching um, Chinelo and um, Dixon, I think. You know, when they were discussing the security fight, or uh, I mean, you should be ready. Yeah. Uh, when he said, you know, go, um, when you're when you're wearing your attire, you should also consider that you know there's a there's a flight mode in your head in, in case of any eventualities, or you need to you know just leave that scene in a hurry. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would be would not be smart enough to wear a sneaker or maybe a sandal or something flat, you know, because again, outside of even the stress of I mean, outside of the flight mode, mm. uh, how about the long hours of standing, you know? Yeah. So even, uh, even where I am, I don't know, we are, we're luxury people here. You see, that's why I like what here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they give us, they give us, you know, places to, you know, relax. You know, sometimes they give us some small chops and all of that, even wow. though I don't eat it, wow. but hey, Boy. it's available there. So, I, I mean, there are some very, very, really safe, polling uh, areas and that's why i particularly like where i where i normally cast my votes but again there are volatile areas where you need to be at alert you know like what he rightly said about you know what you're putting on your clothes i will not wear all this jewelry when i'm going to certain areas so it's only wisdom you know for you to just mm. tone down on whatever it is that you're doing and be ready for you know for whatever uh, maybe if you have to leave that scene in the hurry you should be prepared and ready I, mean, I think the other thing that I, I'd like to point out also, um, in fact, it was the first thing I went to look for um, in the document, which spoke to how the security officials should be dressed. Because, you know, sometimes our officials, you say somebody is in any kind of attire claiming to be a security personnel. Um, so they're all supposed to be in their uniform. So if you are getting accosted, they're supposed to be in their uniforms. They're not supposed to carry any weapons around the polling booths. So just information to empower ourselves and knowing what to expect and what to look out for. Okay, okay. Yeah, mm. very true, very true. I mean, this cannot be even overemphasized, comfortable clothing, because like I said, you're going to queue for a long time. It's inevitable. But on a lighter mood, mm. I mean, I've been seeing the news and people are saying, ah, you don't know where you can meet your future husband. Hey, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where you can meet your future husband. So I mean, dress nice in the police center. You can dress nice movie. without. You can dress nice in comfortable clothing. What no, are you doing? Fair enough. I mean, I'm yeah. just it, well, on a lighter mood, like I said. <laughs> but please, it's very important that we smell nice. No, but I mean, you can actually look really nice and at the same time smart. You yeah, know, so I mean, if, I if that's your goal. <laughs> I mean, I, I think if a husband should find a wife at the polling unit, that would be a, a long-lasting relationship. You mean that both of them have the... They care about their country enough. As long as they didn't come there to vote for two different parties, then it's okay. Ah, Uti, you right. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, please, we need to smell nice and brush your teeth. Brush your teeth, please. Not because you left your house around six a.m. So when you are speaking to someone else, and you're like, oh. no, please let's let's let our breath, <laughs> our breath be nice. Let's smell really good. Let's look good. I, I mean, as much as we're trying to be comfortable, I think that we should also look really good. So, I mean, Nigeria is beautiful. Yeah, you, know, you, know, you, you just you just hit all the right points. You know, you know this thing about smelling good, right? I watched a skit this morning, one of these comedians, you know, he brought out toothbrush and brought out deodorant. And he said the toothbrush is only 300 now. The deodorant is only maybe 1,002 or something. That please, you know, if they take God, beg all of them. Because again, you know, you're standing in queue, somebody's in front of you and, you know, like, no, 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 please. Personal hygiene is very important too. Very, very important. Imagine like, you're, very, you're very important. So, so you, you smell nice. <laughs> Imagine man, that someone is standing in front of you and their hair is smelling. Oh no! Oh my God! It's oh, like no. so much suffering at the same time. You are in the sun, and then someone's hair is, or someone's breath is choking you. Oh my God! I could literally pass out. You so can make a change. Help to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. I think you have a comment. <laughs> okay, so my comment says, "Dear team, I just tuned into your channel. My polling unit is at Ikeja Anifowoshe." to be precise, but I stay at Alimashaw area of Lagos. I would like to know if it is possible that I vote at my locality, a concerned Nigerian, and need my vote to count. So unfortunately, um, you would have had to re, um, what's the word now, move your polling yeah. unit. So there's a process for doing that, which you would have had to do before 
um, this time. So it's not possible to just go to any polling um, unit to vote. As we said, the materials have all been dispatched in preparation for the expected voters at each polling unit. So um, the voter has the the um, viewer hasn't put their name, but unfortunately, um, you have to get to your polling unit to be able to vote. So there's still time to get there this evening. Um, yeah. yeah, you have to vote. There. And I think the curfew, um, Uti, just to add to what you said, the curfew I think is 12 midnight tonight. So after 12 midnight tonight, nobody's allowed to move mm -hmm. until after the elections tomorrow, right? Yeah. So um, if the person is really, really eager to um, cast his or her vote, you are, you need to go. That's why I left my location to come here to vote, right? You need to leave. I didn't want to, but you if not, you should have done that transfer months ago. Because a lot of people have also transferred. I mean, some people were living in Abuja. They are now in Port Harcourt. They transferred their their details to Port Harcourt where they stay. So, I mean, since you didn't do that, for you to for your vote to count in this particular election, you need to head to Surulere. Mm, well said. Okay, I, I was also going to mention that, I mean, we're rounding up now. This election is not a war between ourselves. Please, mm. we're not fighting a war. It's not a religious war. It's not a tribal war. It's just us trying to exercise our, our civic responsibilities in order to make our country a better place for each and every one of us. So please, as you're going to your polling units tomorrow, go in peace. Go with peace. Go for peace. Honestly. Don't go don't there. Don't violence. Exactly. Please. Don't be don't a be man violence. or a woman of war. No. Be a man and a woman of peace. Because I very, very important. You, a lot of people are just so scared about this forthcoming election mm. because it just feels like anything can happen. And truthfully, anything can happen. But we just really hope for the best that nothing really happens. And people are not, people don't allow themselves to be used mm -hmm. as instruments to so, disrupt the election. Yes. Because... I mean, it's a thing, and it has happened time after time. So I'm just, we're just really hopeful right now that mm. the same thing don't re doesn't repeat itself again tomorrow. But other than that, I just hope and pray that we are all of love and joy and peace and not of violence. And when we come back here on Monday, we we'll have. Okay, we had a meeting in the office today, so we cut you short. Yeah. And then at the end of the meeting, the lady just says, "If we still have a country by Monday," and I'm like, oh, "Thank God, please." <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely, we will definitely have, have a country. country. We will definitely have a country. <laughs> in, in, I just want to add to that. Um, so I went to the salon. You know, talking about smelly hair. Mm. I just I had to take out my hair to wash my hair, and you know. So by the time I was done, you know what the, the, my stylist told my. They were so funny. They said, "Please wash until was hair very well. Or wash it very well, so that in case." For the next two weeks, she cannot come to the salon. <laughs> that the, at least the hair will be clean because they know that I like my hair very clean. Yeah. So I just I chuckled. I said, but the thing is, yes, there was. I I, I feel like you know before today, I would have be, been part of the school of thought that you know is going to go violent. But after today, there was some level of calmness that I just noticed while whilst driving. On the roads today, mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be a very peaceful election, right? It's going to be a peaceful election, and like I mean, I would rightly said, this this is not the time to solicit for anything. Just go there quietly, cast your vote, and leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I think I'll just I'll just add to that. Yeah. Um, I saw a meme earlier today um, about the election. It said if you do anyhow, you see anyhow. So <laughs> let's try to avoid seeing anyhow and. Mm -hmm. um, most importantly, staying safe. Mm. For those that are able to go out, have their PVCs, and do their civic duties, mm -hmm. um, vote wisely, and um, yeah, stay safe. Okay, thank you so much, ladies. Yay. Yeah, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Weishu Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagement. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. Our political leaders will know our priorities only if we tell them again and again. And if those priorities begin to show up in the polls, this is by Peggy Noonan. See you on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye. Bye.